y'all and welcome to episode 55 of the Crazy Sock Lady podcast. My name is Kay and this is my podcast all about my knitting and occasionally some crocheting here in Surprise, Arizona where I currently live with my husband and our two sons. Today is Tuesday, January 8th. This is the first podcast of the new year, so happy new year. I hope that everybody had a wonderful holiday season. We had a great holiday. Um, I did Vlogmas this year. If you kept up with that, thank you so much for watching. Um, if you didn't have a chance to keep up with that, because I know I fell behind on like every single one of them and I've been playing catch up since Christmas and the holidays were all over, but, but it's been nice to go back and watch everybody's. Um, but if you didn't catch up with them as they were going up, those are still available on the YouTube channel. There is a Vlogmas 2018 playlist that you can go and watch. But today we have a couple of works in progress to talk about. I'm actually not going to show any finished objects today because so many were gifts um, since the last podcast that I did that yeah, I'm just really not even sure where to pick up and begin with everything because I didn't podcast throughout December because I did Vlogmas. So we're just going to do works in progress today. I hope that is fine with everybody. But first, let's do a little bit of administrative stuff. So you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as The Crazy Sock Lady. And we do have a group for the podcast on Ravelry. If you head over and search the group on the groups tab for Crazy Sock Lady podcast, you're going to find it there. If you don't feel like going and searching for any of those things, any of those places, look right down here in the down bar on YouTube. There's links to everything as well as the show notes for this episode. First, let's talk about knit alongs. So right now we only have one active and it is actually my favorite knit along that I do. This is the third year that I've done this and this is the selfish knit along. So for this knit along, you just have to knit something for yourself anything that you want. Crochet does count as well. Um, anything that you make for yourself, head over and get that entered. I am loving reading through the chatter thread and the finished objects thread to see what you guys are working on. Um, this knit along actually started on December 24th and it will end March 31st. And like I said, it's just knitting something for yourself or crocheting anything you want at all. As long as it's for you, it counts. For this one, I've cast on a pair of socks so far and that's it. <laughs> I have plans to do a pavement sweater as part of, you know, I can't enter and win prizes, but I can knit along with you guys. So I have plans to cast on a pavement sweater in the near future as soon as I get the cardigan that I have on my needles done. And we'll talk about that in works in progress. We did have two knit alongs finished and what I'm going to be doing for those is posting a separate video with the winners for that. I haven't had a chance. Things have just been so crazy. The kids are finally back in school. So some time has been freed up, um, but I think things have just been totally crazy with the holidays, end of the year, Christmas break. So I'll get prizes together soon for that and a video, but that was the Sock Crazy Cow for 2018 and the Crazy Sock Lady Designs Make Along. Those did come to an end at the end of the year. Um, so thank you for everybody that participated in those. I'll talk more about them on the video with the prize winners, but those were two super fun knit alongs to do that were year long knit alongs for last year. Um, and those will not be continuing into 2019. I kind of want to free up to be able to do other knit alongs like the selfish cow. I want to be able to focus on my knit alongs more and maybe knit along with you guys more. So right now we just have the selfish cow going on and we'll see where the year takes us with what else we get into. I'm looking at Calvin the kitty right now. I have the blinds closed on the sliding door because it's so bright outside right now. As usual, it's Arizona. Um, I've already had to, get him away from them once because for some reason they're the vertical blinds and he just attacks them. Sometimes there's like a fly or a bird. Other times I don't see anything and I don't know why he's attacking the blinds, but he's looking like he's about to attack them. So if you hear a lot of commotion, it's Calvin the kitty attacking the blinds. I don't know why he does what he does. But all right, um, next up for the Ravelry group, I just want to mention that we have two swapless swaps open right now. The first one, I'm going to look at my notes so I don't forget anything. The first one is with Jen Shaleen, and this one closes January 15th. There are 14 spots available for this one. 
Then we have one that just opened up and that is with Honeybee Knits and it closes on February 15th and there are 26 spots available for that one. So swap the swaps. I brought this down to show you guys. You get a bag of minis, 40 yard, 10 40 yard minis is what you get with a swap a swap. This is one that we did with Suburban Stitcher. So that's, it's gonna get majorly blown out, but that's how they come. And this year, there's something a little different with them. Let me pull it out here and show you. In your swap a swap bag, you will receive a raffle ticket and a note that says, don't forget to check Ravelry on the first of the month to see if you have won the raffle and keep your tickets for the December 2019 drawing. So you'll get the raffle ticket. You can win a drawing. Um, you want to check the first of the month, see if you won, and then keep a hold of these, tuck them away somewhere for a drawing at the end of the year. So that's something super fun that she has added in to the Swapla Swaps for 2019. Prices and all information are going to be listed in the threads in the Ravelry group. There will be links down below to take you directly to those threads if you're interested. All right, let's talk about works in progress now. So first up, I'm going to show you my Heathrow that I am so close to finishing. So I've got this in a bag from Amy Beth of the Fat Squirrel, one of her huge sweater bags and I love it so much. So here's a picture of the cardigan. And this is by Marie Green. And all I have left to do are the sleeves. That's it. Today at Knit Group, I finished up the bottom, the ribbing along the bottom edge. So all that I have to do are the sleeves and they're not full length sleeves. So I'm hoping I can get it done today or tomorrow. We're going to Flagstaff um, for a knitting weekend, my knitting group and I, and I'm hoping to be able to take it because I bought this yarn when we were in Flagstaff for our last weekend that we did up there in September. So I just think it'll be fun to have this done and I'm sure we'll probably make our way over to Pearl in the Pines and do some shopping. So how fun would it be to be able to have this done with the yarn I bought there last time and then I can buy some more yarn. I mean, that makes total sense in my head. So hopefully it'll be done. Like I said, the sleeve shouldn't take too long. So here's what I have so far. There's the armholes. I've got it folded in half. So um, that's the armholes. I just got to do the sleeves. But it's got, these are, this is the front right here, what hangs in the front tons of ribbing. The cabling goes all along the bottom. Kind of see the cable pattern there. Hopefully, I don't know how well it's going to show up. I'm really hoping it's going to block out. I got a gauge, so that was good. But right now when I try it on, it's shorter in the back than I want it to be. So hopefully, which I know part of that is this cable pattern right here that'll block out a good chunk. So I think it'll be good. Um, so hopefully tonight I'll be able to sit down, pick up the sleeves and get this done and then set it to block tomorrow. That's the plan. I don't know that I'll get both sleeves done tonight, maybe tomorrow morning, but I love it. I cannot wait to wear it. The yarn is so soft. The yarn, I should probably show you the yarn. So like I said, I bought this last time we were in Flagstaff at Pearl in the Pines. It is Queensland Rustic Tweed. And the collar is 110. It is a wool, alpaca, acrylic, and viscose blend. It's got a little bit of everything. It's super soft already and squishy. And I cannot wait to see how it feels when it blocks. It's going to be like a hug, I think. It's going to be super soft. And that'll really be the telling of if I buy more of this exact yarn, how it feels when it's blocked. I think it's gonna be amazing. Bless you, Calvin the Kitty. Calvin the Kitty has had a cold again. I think I talked before um, when we got him about how he always sees birds. He's so rotten, guys. Um, about how when we got him, he was sick. He's He was fine for a while and now he's, I think he's getting a cold again. He's been awful sneezy and nasty, so. 
I don't know. Hopefully he will be good. It definitely hasn't slowed him down any. But I still have this much yarn left. I just barely used any of this to finish up the ribbing. I think I did one row of the ribbing and then bound off with this um, skein. So I still have all that left. I don't think I'll use that much for the sleeves. We'll see how much I have left. I might be able to get a pair of fingerless mitts or a hat maybe. I don't know. We'll see what I have left when I'm done because I still have a little bit of a ball right there. So that yarn went a long ways, I feel like. I think I bought extra too, because I always do that. I always tend to buy more than I actually need because I'm afraid I might want to lengthen the sweater or change something, run out. But okay, that's the first work in progress that's been getting a lot of work lately. And then I have in a bag from In a Pickle Knitting, my January Desert Vista Dye Work socks. Yes, I'm trying again. Last year I tried Susan's Knit Along of knitting. Um, if you have not heard of it, you use her yarn and knit a pair of socks every month. I believe you can do mittens too. All the rules are over in her Ravelry group, but you have to use her yarn. Um, last year I failed. I think I failed in August of last year which is pretty ridiculous if you think about it. So I'm trying again this year. I am using the yarn that I failed with last year. Last year in August, I'm pretty sure it was August, I started a pair of socks. I can't remember what the pattern name is off the top of my head. With this colorway, I got one sock done. It didn't really fit right, it was a little too tight. I lost steam on it and that was it. <laughs> I never picked it back up, never finished it, but I had 70 some grams left of that yarn. So I decided to go ahead and use up the rest of this cake of yarn and hopefully I won't fail this year. I think what broke me last year, up until that point, I had been doing only vanilla socks for this knit along and it was perfect because I love having a vanilla sock. I take them everywhere. I knit a row or two while I'm you know, cooking dinner, waiting on something to cook for dinner. It, they're just the perfect thing to have on the go all the time. So doing a pattern sock with them, I couldn't take them everywhere I went with me because it was a pattern I really had to focus and pay attention on. Um, so that's why I failed last year. That's what I'm saying. That, that's what I think anyways. So this year it's vanilla socks only. So here is my progress so far on sock number one. Since I only have 70 grams, I'm doing them shorter than I normally would. I've marked for the heel, I'm gonna do an afterthought heel, and I've marked right there for the heel. So I'm doing them shorter than I would. You have to have three inches for your leg for this knit along. Um, that's one of the guidelines, the rules to go by. So I've got my heel marked three inches, a little over three inches down actually, and I'm working on the foot. And I'm using a US1 2.25 millimeter DPNs for this, and I cast on 64 stitches. That is my go-to for any sock that I talk about, if I forget to mention it. If they're for me, it's always US1 2.25 millimeter needles, 64 stitches. And I'm using Signature DPNs for this project. I treated myself <laughs> after Christmas. I've been wanting a pair of signature DPNs. I was actually gonna buy a pair at um, Rhinebeck and then realized signature doesn't even bend at Rhinebeck. So that didn't happen. So I ordered myself a pair and I doubt you'll be able to see. Let's see if we can get it to focus. Probably not. I don't know if that focused well enough to see, but I had Crazy Sock Lady put on the side because I thought if I'm gonna treat myself, I'm gonna go all out. So. But I'm really enjoying this so far. And I'm going to take this. My Flagstaff knitting this weekend is going to be socks. I don't think I'm going to take anything else. I'm, there's no way. I was going to say, I might take a couple of extra skeins in case I run out and want to cast something on. But there's no way I'm going to finish all of the socks that I have going right now while we're in Flagstaff. So that is the first sock whip. Then I also have in another Fat Squirrel bag, Harry Potter one. I have another pair of vanilla socks and this is Adelaide Cottage in her 2018, her Vlogmas 2018 colorway. 
super pretty. Wait until you see how this is knitting up. I'm only on the first sock. And that's how far I am. Look how pretty that is. I really love this colorway. And I've got this sock on Chow Goo. I'm doing Magic Loop for this, which I haven't really done a whole lot of lately um, until here recently. I've got two socks going on Magic Loop. So sometimes I just switch back and forth. The next one is still in a Christmas bag because it's Christmas socks that didn't get done this year. I actually have one done. I should have brought a sock blocker down, but I didn't. So here is sock number one. This is Regia Perfect. And I'll look at the collar number here in just a minute. Um, but I did a slip stitch, heel flap, and gusset. That's my favorite, favorite heel to do. It fits me the best. And I really enjoy working socks up with the Regia. And I think the Perfect is such a fun, neat thing. You just, if you've never done it before, it started with a green and you knit until the collars start you knit your cuff until the collars start, I should say. And then you just knit down the leg until the collar changes again. And you do your heel and then knit your foot as long as you want. And the collars eventually end and go back to the green so that you have a green toe. But that is sock number one. And I am working on sock number two. Whoops. That's how far I am on number two into the leg. So it's just easy, plain vanilla knitting at the moment. And I've got these on Knitter's Pride Zings. And the collar number, let me pull the tag out here. I think it's 09136. Let's see if I'm right. I was right. 09136. I'm shocked that I remembered that. Okay, so last sock whip. This is a second sock, but I'm not gonna show you the first sock yet because it's a design that I'm just gonna keep under wraps until I'm ready to show it. But the yarn that I'm using is Tippy, ooh, so bright. But the yarn that I'm using is Tippy Tree Yarns in the Mean Mr. Mustard colorway. Look how pretty that is. So there's not too much to show on this one, just the cuff. It's all I've gotten done on the second sock for this one. And I have these on Haya Haya Sharps. Apparently I just have different needles on everything today. A little bit of everything, a little bit of variety. I'm gonna clean up a bit here before we move on to showing some new designs that recently came out. But I went through my whips to kind of see what I have, you know, the first of the year and all of that and I don't feel like mine are too out of control right now I'm I'm pleased with where they're at I do have four sock whips that's a lot but those are gonna be my knitting for Flagstaff this weekend so I feel like that will allow me to get a ton of progress done on them because I knit socks fairly fast um, but then I have the Heathrow which is so close to being done I, ha I do have a languishing shawl, a beaded shawl, um, that has been on the needle since July, probably. It's up there in the cubbies. I would love to get it back down and work on it sometime soon. And then I have a shawl design that I'm working on that's very close to being done, hopefully within the next couple of weeks. But I don't feel like that's too bad. Scrappy projects don't count towards that, so none of my scrappy blankets count. Um, but yeah, not too bad. So I need to run upstairs and grab the designs that have recently came out that I want to share with you guys. And then we'll chat about those for a moment. So to finish out the podcast today, I wanted to share with you guys the three designs that have been released since the last time we chatted on an actual podcast episode. So first up is a shawl design. This is with grace in your heart. This is a triangular shaped shawl and it uses two skeins of fingering weight yarn. This amazing collar is from Four Boys Fiber in the Fine Wine colorway. I love it so much. I really might have to order a sweater's quantity. I keep saying that, but I would love a sweater in this. 
I just love it. So I love triangular shape shawls are my favorite. I love just throwing them on like this, just by themselves over a top or this and then putting a jacket over them. We had a um, fire, like a little bonfire with the neighbors on New Year's Eve. And I had a shawl, not this one, but a different shawl on and then my coat over top of it because it was actually pretty chilly. <laughs> and it, they're just perfect for keeping this whole area warm and they just look cute like this, I think. So this design is probably my favorite that I've done so far up to this date. This is my favorite. I love just the classic look of it and the fabric with the elongated slip stitches. It just creates such a squishy fabric. It's just so nice. Um, so there's elongated slip stitches, some twisted rib. They just repeat throughout and I just think it's such a classic looking shawl design. Next up is a pair of fingerless mitts. So these are the spruce mitts and I don't know what they have on them. So these were when we were outside with the neighbors. Um, they ended up one of the kids wearing them and I think they must have been playing in something. I didn't look at them until now because the neighbor gave them back to me the other day. Um, okay, there was like sticks and leaves in them because um, the kids' hands were cold, so I shared some fingerless mitts. Um, these are the spruce mitts. They have a cable design that goes up the front, and they work up very quickly. For being a fingering weight fingerless mitt with cables, that is something that I hear from so many people that are working up the pattern is they are shocked at how quick it works up. And last but not least, Eric requested a cowl to wear while he rides his motorcycle. Um, he wanted something he could just put on that would be around his neck that he could double over. I took his idea and his suggestions as I worked on it on what he wanted and this is what I came up with and this one um, the mitts in the shawl are paid for patterns that are available in Ravelry and of course there'll be links down below um, but this one is actually a free pattern so it uses I'm realizing as I'm getting ready to tell you this yarn that I didn't tell you what yarn this was so this was out of tippy tree yarns in the spruce colorway that was the inspiration for the pattern design and the name of the pattern. But okay, this one is out of worsted weight. I just used um, Knit Picks. I want to say Swish, but I don't know if that's right. Um, it was a worsted weight. Pretty sure it was Knit Picks Swish Worsted. I had some leftover from hats and fingerless mitts that I had made Eric and the boys for Christmas of 2017. So I thought it would be perfect to use up some of that yarn from my stash. So it's, as you can see, it's very long right now, but like I said, he wanted to be able to fold it over. Just a basic ribbed cowl. And with it being ribbed, you can just flip it inside out and you've got a little bit of a different look. All right, so I figured I would try it on for you guys. So you can see what it looks like. Now I will say I don't like turtlenecks, so <laughs> this is not my favorite thing to have on at the moment, but you can kind of see how it just folds over, just keeps your neck nice and toasty and warm. And it's such a simple pattern. And I did include um, tips in the pattern if you want to make it longer, shorter, wider, you know, you wanna make it bigger around or even more narrow. So all of that is included in there as well. I don't like things touching my neck. Does anyone else like that? I can't wear turtlenecks. Like even this has been bothering me today. I feel like I've been tugging on this all day to bring it down. I don't know what it is. I can't stand things touching my neck. It makes me feel very claustrophobic, but okay. <laughs> Eric loves it and that's all that matters because it was for him. Um, so yes, this is the Eric cowl and it's available on Ravelry for free right now. I think that's it for today's episode. 
I hope that you guys enjoyed this one. Thank you so much for joining me and I will see you guys again soon. Until then, happy knitting. Bye.